All right, you think he continued to improve? I think his depth artist. is what he he ended up divorcing himself to a large degree from the from the group mm. to explore his own uh, Rambo like journey that he called it. Mm. In fact, I wrote a screenplay called Break as a young student at NYU. I sent it to him. I loved him at that time, and oh, yeah. it became the Break became the basis of Platoon. When I made the Doors movie twenty uh, some years later, he was had died in nineteen seventy three. I made the movie at eighty in ninety one. I swear to you, a woman knocked on the door, came in, she had a re recommendation. She said, I'm the wife of Bill Siddons, who was his manager. She said, Bill went to Paris to pick up the body. Yeah. And uh, he, he took the possessions, and he wanted you to have this. And she put out, brought out the script I had sent him. Wow. Which was in it. his apartment in Paris. And he was reading it, apparently, because it was, had a mark on it when he died. It's I hope you weren't reading that in the bath. You probably pushed him over the edge. No, what no, happened no. in that screenplay, Oliver? Oh, uh, no! That, that screenplay became in, uh, in other versions in variations of Platoon. Hmm, wow. My word, you've lived a hell of a life, haven't you? Why don't we listen to a record? Main thing I didn't even get round to was that when we met, you said I was a bit like Jim Morrison. I <laughs> did say that. Ta-da! It's on the radio now. No one can take that back. That's out there. You're listening to the Russell Brand Show. Oliver Stone has just said I'm a bit like Jim Morrison. That's right. Read and weep, suckers. Simon Amstel has resumed his place where Oliver Stone was sat moments ago. Did you enjoy Oliver Stone's... He just got up and, and went at the, uh, the, 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 the junction where the song came on. just... Oh, okay. And then he went off and we made some plans to meet up another day. He's drifted off. Hope you're enjoying the show. Um, Oliver Stone, he's apparently he's drifted in the corridors. He's probably looking for a conspiracy. He's, up, he's doing something tantric in a corridor, most likely. He's hunted down Kelly Brook. He's got her on some tantric tent peg of his own devising. Simon, what did you make of the interview? I quite liked it. It was very interesting because he didn't seem to make eye contact with you for about five minutes. I can see you sort of trying to jump around him to get some attention. It's like, what about, what about all Orgasms. <laughs> it's yeah. quite funny. And then he's, he came round and he eventually started looking at you like an actual human. Oliver Stone, of course, is a man that keeps his own counsel. It, uh, some Johnny-come-lately, Russell Brand-style character. It's not something that Oliver Stone will kowtow to once you've written the old Midnight Express, Scarface, Directed Platoon, at The Doors, mm. JFK and that. Perhaps Big Brother's Big Mouth seems less innovative. Yes, Who's yes. to say? It was great, that Big Mouth program. Wasn't you know, it? it? I was mean, great. changed the world in its way. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that reality TV spin-off shows have never been the same since. <laughs> that was Oliver Stone. A fantastic uh, uh, interview for me that shows that the Russell Brand Show can incorporate someone shouting F off Tam Manuel's answer <laughs> phone, as well as one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, talking seriously about tantric sex. What a broad remit. And to summarise this madness, we have England's finest poet, it's Mr. G. This poem is called, Where's Your Head At? Yeah, where is it? If only a needle to the brain could alleviate the pain. Sometimes a seizure creates believers who are seen to be but a stone's throw away. Happiness escapes once flatulence prevails. Be it Simon strolling or exposing all the holes in the mail. Life forms its own mystery, visiting the bee's secret history. Leaving this world holistically dizzy linguistically. Let's talk radio. Expressions of midnight are made to go. From even electing a persona non grata fulfilled our macho ratio. Very good! on the mic he makes it up see he mentions all the things that happen across the radio show he sums them up quite brilliantly holes in the mail holes in the mail like when you're talking about the daily mail oh Do you right. see? I, thought meant, Listen. I thought he meant anuses I focus didn't, i didn't know I'm no sorry. that's because you're like ever since you've become promiscuous like what i am not you think like well you are not well, no. your scale of course but just not maybe once once a fortnight once a fortnight is too much for you and the, for the poor sods out there they have to put up with your spindly ruts they like my cat <laughs> of course they like the cat. It's a distraction from you. Now, you're gorgeous. Thanks. I'll tell you what, if I Thanks. wasn't so yeah, heterosexual, yeah. God. I'd be all... If all I wasn't so picky. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Simon. I'm still my actual friend saying that to me and my feelings. Well, we didn't have time for our regular items like gay or jingle race war. What is it good for? Shame, really, because, uh, you know, I don't know if I've ever harped on about it. Kelly Brook available yet? Kelly Brook uh, has sent a message. Russell, I find you, Oliver Stone and Simon Abstall, <laughs> too fey, too way-faced and weak mm. to warrant a contribution from me. Clear off. There yeah. you go. She's put it plainly. I like, But Kelly Brook, she's lovely. I've met her a couple of times. She's, she doesn't make you think... 
Well, I'd change for uh, perhaps for an hour. What happened last time I said Dita Von Tees was the lady you were trying to seduce? Anything happened there? Well, actually, two of them just never rang again. Oh. You know, just like, so I get excited about things, and I just sort of think, well, that was then, I've moved on. Oh. You know, like, Dita Von Tees, very lovely woman, if I meet her again, perhaps I was, you know, but really, to tell the truth, I'm so in love with them. My mate Carl says, you're in, he goes, you're in love with the idea of polygamy and promiscuity. It's mm. like that, you're faithful to that idea. It's like, you know, it's like your girlfriend is in fact a thousand women and if that, that if that one of that thousand women's not with you you miss them you feel lonely you're calling them you're faithful to them dedicated to polygamy and promiscuity so you know that's my mate carl's views so what's the future the future my darling is an unknowable quantum entity that we can one day own with our brilliance and we shall pop it in our pockets with a bit of help from Oliver Stone and all our pals, all the wonderful guests we've had this week. The future for me, I want children and I want a revolution. I'm going to get this island, we're all going to live in it, it's going to be great. And I'm going to need you to help. But first of all, you're going to have to stop popping pop star bubbles and just get on with trying to bloody well overthrow the government with me and Oliver Stone. Really, the government? Yeah, the bloody government. Have they got a single out? I don't know if I can do it if they haven't got well, a single out. Well, yes, they have in a way. And that single is called Keeping Us Spellbound, the manufacturer <laughs> of consent. They're keeping us all done. Afters hat pins they are. Oh, We've got to catchy. do something about it. Of course yeah. it's catchy. Oh god. Of course you've under a lot of pressure, you and me, Si. What a show it's been though. Great show. Think of some of our guests. Dizzy Rascal, he oh. was in here. Wasn't oh. he lovely? Yeah, lovely. I like his voice actually. Even when he's talking, he's sort of he's got a nice quality to it. I'd like to hear him popping chewing gum. I'd like to hear him shouting at a taxi. He's got something about him, that dizzy rascal. Plus he seemed impressed with my freestyling. Didn't he? Yeah, he certainly nodded. Yes, he nodded with what I took to be joy and approval. And also, who else did you have on the show? Oh, you didn't have Kelly Brook. Mate, Ricky, Stone, Kelly Brook never about. turned up. Oliver Stone was here, raising the bar for all of us, very much the forefather of revolution in, uh, in pop cultural terms. And what have you got coming up next week, Russell? David Walliams! Oh. David Walliams! He's the co-host, he's the co-host. David Walliams, he'll be, he's interesting. Yeah, I have an interest in friendship with him. I, I love him very much. He'll, he'll, like, he's, in a way like you, always wants to derail me and unsettle me. You've been very good at not derailing me this week. Thanks, I appreciate that. Did I, I didn't derail you last time, did I? Yeah, he kept saying things like, you're the, oh, you, Russell, are a representative of the system. You're like Goebbels. Oh. Things like that. Do you remember? Did I say that you, you said like that I was like You are a Goebbels. bit like Goebbels. I, know, I look, I like Goebbels and yeah. am like Goebbels. That's two things I say about Goebbels. No, nah, I'm not into him at all. For <laughs> <right>. <laughs> He's an idiot, to the truth be known. So, but yeah, next week, David Wallins will be doing the show. Don't know if it's going to be live or not. I'm off over to Los Angeles, do a lot of good, stuff over good. there. What have you got coming up? More buzz nothing, cockery? Nothing, just television. Just <laughs> television. Well, do you know what? There's people out there, they'd love to present buzz cocks. Yeah. Do you remember that? They could have chose, remember before you got it? They had loads of people had a go. You was the one they chose, weren't you? Please, Lauren Laverne had to go. Who else had to go? All different ones. They picked you. <laughs> you should be happy. I sound like my mum, who's now the only person who texts me after each show. Nobody. I don't even know if anyone watches it anymore. People watch it. People like it. When you come on this radio show, look. There's this email here. Go on. Hey, Simon Axdall, nice. Thank God he's on the show with you. I'd give anything, literally anything, he's to not have even holding a, piece a back of paper. baby with him. A back baby. People want with you. Isn't that, that lovely? Nice. Look, here's this thing here. <laughs> oh, look. All right. Was it time to wrap up the show for the newsy poos? Right, Simon. Thank you for co-hosting the show with me. You've been fantastic. Thanks to all our guests. Thanks all of you for listening. What a good show it's been. It's been a bit mad, hasn't it? But that's life for you. Soon it was we'll good. Good, wasn't it? Soon we'll all be dead down the drain. What about then? That's going to be an awful time for all of us. Okay, stick with us. We love you. Stay on Radio 2 if you want to do what you like. Uh, Simon, actually, will you take us out of the show by reading out this thing for us, dear? The Russell Brand Show is a vanity project for the BBC online on digital and on 8891 FM. This the is Radio 2 um, bloody from the old BBC. News. Yeah, news.